Hello, everybody, and welcome to Attaché, the show that gets you in, out, and around some of the world's greatest cities. My name is Alex Hunter, and I'll be your Sherpa on this international adventure. And today, we're here, we're finally here in Tokyo. No book, no TV show, no movie, no documentary can prepare you for Tokyo. Whatever image you've conjured up in that vivid imagination of yours from countless hours flicking through guidebooks or binge watching Lost in Translation, it will be but a pitiful pastiche on the real Tokyo. Every city that you visit from now on, you will compare to Tokyo. Tokyo is served by two international airports, Narita and Haneda. Narita is 43 miles to the northeast of the city. Yes, 43 miles. Haneda is much closer, just eight miles to the south. Both of these airports, though, are world-class, among the best and busiest in the world, serving over 100 million passengers per year between the two of them. Narita and Haneda are also home to our friends at Japan Airlines, who kindly flew us to Tokyo on one of their awesome 777-300s. If you're headed to Tokyo, this is the way to do it. Now you could be coming into either of those airports when visiting Tokyo, so we're gonna tell you how to get into town from both of them. Narita, you actually have a few options depending on where in Tokyo you're trying to get to. The Skyliner train runs from the airport to Ueno Station near the University of Tokyo, and the Narita Express, or NEX, serves a variety of Greater Tokyo stations, including popular tourist areas like Shinjuku and Shibuya via Tokyo Station. The Skyliner costs 2,400 yen and takes about 45 minutes to Ueno Station. And the Narita Express costs 2,940 yen and takes just under an hour to get to Tokyo Station. The easiest and frankly the most fun way to get into town from Haneda is the monorail, which goes directly from the airport to Hamamatsu Station right in the center of town. And from there you can jump on any of Tokyo's mass transit services. One alternative for both airports is the limousine bus. This is a dedicated airport bus service which will take you from Tokyo airports, both Narita and Haneda, to almost every major hotel in this city. Now the downside is the amount of time it takes. If the traffic is bad, it can take north of 90 minutes. The upside is peace of mind. Because it will take you directly to your hotel, you don't have to worry about getting from a subway or bus station to the hotel. It's a great service. Tokyo is huge, I mean, beyond comprehension big. In fact, it's the largest city in the world by population. 38 million people spread out over 5,000 square miles. But as you would assume, Tokyo has one of the most extensive mass transit systems in the world. It's clean, safe, efficient, and I have to admit, occasionally kind of confusing. Confusing because several different railway systems operate within Tokyo the JR East network, the two subway networks, and a host of private lines. And to make things just slightly more confusing, different systems appear on different route maps, so it does take some practice. But don't worry, that's what we're here for. There are two main subway lines in Tokyo, the Tokyo Metro and the Toei Subway. Now because these lines are owned by two separate companies, you have to pay and pass through a ticket barrier before transferring. The good news is if you have a Suiku or Pasmo card, more on those in a second, it's a pretty straightforward process. Just tap in and tap out. I'm riding on the subway. There's also the JR East network, which is home to the JR Yamanote line. Now this line will be your friend while you're in Tokyo because it does a full loop of the city. Look for the green line on the map and the green trains. Because the Tokyo transit system can be a little bit confusing, there's a policeman standing right next to me. Because the Tokyo transit system can be a little bit confusing, it's not a bad idea to get a transit app on your phone. Rail map light is pretty good, but it's hard to beat Google Maps. Now both of those will need a data connection to be of any use to you. When leaving the subway, these yellow signs show which exit corresponds with which destination above ground. Extremely handy because some of these subway stations are the size of small English villages. Like many major cities, the trains and subways here in Tokyo tend to stop running between midnight and 5 a.m., so plan accordingly. 
If you need to travel between midnight and 5 a.m., then taxi is really your only option. Now, taxis are abundant in Tokyo, but they are a little bit more expensive than other forms of transport in the city. A couple things to note about traveling by taxi. Between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m., the fares increase by 20%. When you're hailing a taxi, look for the red sign in the window and the lit top bar. One neat little quirk about Tokyo taxis is that the rear passenger doors open and close automatically so you don't need to do it yourself. One last thing on taxis, don't assume that your taxi driver is going to speak English. It's much better to bring your destination printed out on a card or even bring a map with you. Most hotels will be more than happy to provide that for you. One final thing on transport, it's definitely worth getting a Suica or Pasmo card, Japan's stored value transit system. Not only can you use it on trains, subways, and buses, but also in every major convenience store and vending machine, but it will also automatically take care of your transfer fee when you inevitably switch between one train service and another. There's no difference between the Suica and Pasmo cards, they're just owned by different companies. You can buy and recharge them at any of the kiosks in any station where you'd ordinarily buy a ticket. And all those kiosks are in English too, so no worries there. Both types of card require a 500 yen deposit, which you'll get back when you return the card. The minimum charge amount is 1,000 yen, and it's cash only, so bear that in mind when you pick yours up. Tokyo is quantifiably Tokyo is quantifiably the best food city on the planet. It <laughs> Tokyo is quantifiably the best food city on the planet, and it has 226 Michelin-starred restaurants. That's more than London, Paris, and New York combined. This is a place where you should stow your inhibitions in the overhead locker and be adventurous. A thousand food surprises are waiting for you in the covered alleyways, the three-person yakitori joints, and the indecipherable ramen menus. So relax, go with the flow, and you will be absolutely blown away by the food here in Tokyo. As you know, we take etiquette pretty seriously here on Attaché, so a couple of eating and drinking etiquette points before we dive into Tokyo's food. If you're gonna use chopsticks, and you should at least try, don't spear your food with a single chopstick or leave your chopsticks standing upright in a bowl of rice. Both are considered extremely rude. Also, don't leave your chopsticks crossed on the plate, bowl, or table. Breakfast, a loser's meal. Discuss. with the evils of jet lag firmly upon us, Greg and I have been waking up at obscenely early hours of the day. And as we've wandered the streets of Tokyo at like seven o'clock in the morning looking for breakfast, we've realized it's not really a big meal here in Japan. And conversations with friends here have confirmed that fact. So uh, coffee shops don't seem to open until 11 a.m. and there's not many breakfast options outside of hotel restaurants. So bear that in mind before you start your day's adventures. So of course, a staple of Japanese food is ramen, and you can find some of the best ramen here in Tokyo, but given this is our first trip to Tokyo, we wanted to find someone to guide us through our very first Tokyo ramen experience. So we found the guy that literally wrote the book on Tokyo ramen, Brian McDuxon. So you run ramenadventures.com. Right. So why ramen? Man, it's, for me, it's kind of, a, it's an everyman food in Japan. You know, there's no high-end ramen, no, you know, sushi. You got this place you can't get reservations to, and if you could, it's $400 a person. There's a lot of different variation in Japanese cuisine between high and low. Ramen, it's across the board. Nice. So we're gonna go and try two different types of ramen in two different yeah. parts of Tokyo. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to this. Let's do it. First stop, Hadagaya, where we learned the art of ordering, the invaluable knowledge that, if in doubt, the top left option is your friend. And perhaps more importantly, we learn that slurping is actually encouraged. Next up, schemen, a different take on ramen where the noodles are served cold and just as susceptible to a good slurping. And just like that, with our stomachs and hearts full and with a copy of Brian's book in hand, we bid farewell. And we had no idea what was about to hit us. O B beef. I think that 
was the greatest thing I've ever eaten in my life. And I don't, I don't say that lightly. I mean, I mean that. That might have been the greatest thing I've ever tasted. That was mind-alteringly good. The, the sea urchin just kind of melts into the beef. And what, where do I... What do I do now? Like, I don't even know what to do. I'm going to buy a beer in a vending machine because this is the greatest city in the world. I think I should get the green label because it's, it's brewed for good times. So many coins. It's cold. Light years ahead of us. Tokyo is an international city, there's no doubt about it. But one of the things I have noticed is not a lot of people speak English. So it is really useful to come with a few key Japanese phrases and words under your belt. And a great way to do that is with our friends over at italki.com. And if you click on the link below, you can get one Japanese lesson absolutely free when you buy another one in advance. Japan uses the yen. Coins range from 1 to 500 yen, where notes take over in 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, and 10,000 yen denominations. Despite being the technological center of the known universe, I mean, have you seen the toilets here? Japan is still a very cash-centric economy. So don't assume that a bar or a restaurant or a shop is going to take a credit card and make sure you have got plenty of cash on you. I finally found my nirvana. Which brings me to a very important Tokyo tip. Tokyo tip, I like that. We should have a graphic for that, Greg. ATMs or cash points in Tokyo have an odd quirk. They close on the evenings and weekends. I have no idea why, but some, not all, a lot, will close up shop around eight o'clock. And I'm really glad that our friend Joseph Tame told us that before we made complete asses of ourselves. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. You're welcome. <laughs> if you're in a pinch and need an ATM after hours, look for a 7-Eleven. Most of them are open 24 hours a day and have ATMs. And another thing that we've learned many, many times in the brief amount of time we've been here is just because your ATM card has Visa or Cirrus on it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Look for ATMs at Citibank and 7-Eleven for safe bets. Tokyo has a reputation as being an expensive city, and in some cases that reputation is justified. But it can be a surprisingly affordable place if you're willing to explore. The yen has lost a lot of its value in recent years, meaning your pound or dollar is going a lot further than it used to. So what do things cost in Tokyo? Let's do the rundown. A pint of beer will cost you 500 yen. A cup of coffee will cost you around 300 yen. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you're gonna pay about 700 yen. So what about our good friend tipping? Well, tipping is considered rude in Japan and should not be done. Oh, that felt good to say, I'm gonna say it again. Do not tip in Japan. Okay, but why? Well, when you tip, it could be interpreted in a couple of different ways. Firstly, you got a level of service that you didn't expect, so you feel compelled to give more. But good service is considered part of what you pay for here in Japan. So when you tip, you're putting your server in, in a really awkward position. Another way it could be interpreted is that you're somehow better than your server. So the bottom line here is do not tip in Japan. It's been a long day of filming. I'm knackered. So I'm just going to enjoy a nice quiet beer in a nice quiet joint here in Tokyo with some friends. That's a great way to end a Tokyo night. Japan, everybody. It's taken me 36 and a half, to be precise, years to get to Tokyo. And for most of those 36 and a half years, people have kept saying to me, oh, Tokyo, Tokyo, it's the greatest city in the world. And I've, I've traveled a lot. I've kind of been like, it, it can't be that good. But now that I've been here, I get it. This is a hyper modern city that is built on deep, deep traditional roots. You can walk down a city street in Tokyo and see the future being defined right in front of you. Take a few more steps and you see practices that haven't changed in a thousand years. I think for a traveler, you are defined by before Tokyo and everything after Tokyo. And it is a waterline, a line in the sand for every traveler.
Tokyo. If you've been to this city before and you think we've missed something, then leave it in the comments you, below. We but remember, for relaxing time, yes. make yes. it some Tory time. Yes. Yeah. Right? I couldn't possibly wrap this episode without thanking Chris, John, Frankie, Shin, Paul, Satoko, and especially Joseph for their time, generosity, expertise, and good humor. We couldn't have done this without you guys. Hello everybody and welcome to Attaché, the show, oh my god! Greg, run you fool! The show that gets you in, out, and around some of the world's greatest cities. My name's Alex Hunter and I'll be your Sherpa on this international adventure. And today we're here, we're finally here in Tokyo. It's plastic. We know. 